He was trained as a merchant and a bookkeeper in Troy, New York when he was 14. He came west in 1852 by a clipper ship to San Francisco. It took me four and a half months. He failed in the gold fields in California and Oregon. He passed through Walla Walla on my way to Caulfield Gold Fields. He returned to Dallas after hearing of all the Indian killings. Part of the trip was on foot because the natives stole his horses. He joined the Oregon Volunteers to fight Indians. He marched back to Walla Walla to rescue the Huston Bay trading post that was ransacked by the natives in 1855. He was in the Battle of Walla Walla near the Whitman Mission. It was a three-day battle from December 7th to December 10th when reinforcements arrived and he saw very few natives the rest of the winter. He was at the 1855 and 1856 treaty signing with the Indians. October 1st, 1858, he was the first civilian postmaster of well, well it school, man. No, right there. Walla Walla. Walla Walla. Of Walla Walla. I ran a store in Walla Walla selling 30,000 of goods in 1859, and he still ended up 9,000 in debt. Not all the farmers and miners could pay their bills that year. He left Walla Walla with my partner Christopher Higgins and our clerk Frank Woody. We left Walla Walla with a pack train of 76 animals carrying merchandise and the first safe to enter Montana via the new Mullen Pass Road to Missoula. There, thank you. Now, Hannah, you know a little bit about your grandmother. Vacation? Yeah. Okay. I'd, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the, the Wordens. I'm, I'm not a Worden. I'm a Worden by marriage. And... Uh, I think probably the most interesting person of all is Lucretia Worden. And she was a little girl of about 11 years old and uh, came through. Her parents were coming through. Uh, they were on their way. They were from Pennsylvania. And they were on their way to uh, the gold fields. Well, because of the Indian uprising, they decided they better come north and instead of going through Salt Lake. And so they got here. And Mrs. Worden was expecting a third child. And so they stopped at the Hellgate store. And I guess they didn't bring my pictures out. Did they? Uh, do you want me to text my dad and tell him to bring them? Yeah, but, okay. but they stopped at the Hellgate store. And where that is now, is you know where the Hellgate store is on Mullen Road? Well, if you go out Mullen Road, there's a Hellgate store. That, if you'd go to the last trailer house, um, there are storage bin, and look east, it's out on that point is where it's, the first word in store but was. But it's not there anymore? Yeah. It's, you, it got taken down a while ago? It got ago. taken down, and but I think there's a log or two up there. So, But they, he, they were interesting. This little girl was a, 11 years old, the Millers, and so they stopped, and mm -hmm. uh, she'd hang around this store that Mr. Worden had started. The store was about this big, you know, <laughs> and 20 by 24. And finally, he decided he'd like, when she was 14, he asked her to marry him. And he was 37. And they were, they were married and had seven children. And my husband was a grandson of the first Mr. Henry Worden. So that's where we are. Now, I'm a prison city kitty, uh, so uh, I'm a Deer Lodge. My dad was the warden of the prison in Deer Lodge, and then I married a warden. It's pronounced warden. No relation to Warden's Market. They're, they came in with Mr. Hammond, uh, and they, that probably would have been, uh, oh, I don't know when they came in, 80s, late 80s, but Warden's Market 
is Donovan Worden, the attorney. And our, our market was on Main Street where the parking garage is. So anyway, that's kind of a, the sum of it all. But that little Lucretia, I'd love to talk about her because I think she must have been just wonderful. Do you want to add something, Hannah? Um, Loud. Uh, well, <clears throat> once their, their kids' names were um, Lucina, uh, Henry Owen Warden. Lucina is buried right over there. She was a Sterling. <laughs> so these two families are... Yeah, this is all family. All family. Okay, go on. Uh, Henry Owen Warden, Carolina, Carolina uh, M. Warden, Louis M. Warden, um, Frank L. Warden, Horace B. Warden, and Ruth Miller Warden. And um, Francis Lyman Warden died in February fifth, eighteen eighty-seven. What? How did he, he die? He contracted again? pneumonia. Yeah. Uh, putting laying out the water system, and came down and left this little girl that he'd married at fourteen, yeah. left her with the seven children. And all of them, with the exception of Bill's father, had beautiful educations. So I guess the Sterlings aren't here. One of the Sterling grandchildren's here. And I don't know what happened to. I'm, I'm from Deer Lodge, so, but uh, they, they're supposed to be coming along. But Mr. Sterling came in with Hammond, and he Hammond was the big gun, big gun. Mr. Robinson and I speak at Leadership Missoula. And he's always getting up talking about Mr. Hammond this and Mr. Hammond that. So I said, would you like me to tell you about Mr. Hammond? And he said, well, it doesn't matter whether I want you to or not because you're going to. A.B. <laughs> <But coughs> Hammond was a handsome, handsome man. Came in with the McLeods and all. And uh, he was crazy about this Lyde Catlin. And Lyde Catlin wouldn't give him the time of day. Well, God, he was just half frantic over this, you know, because he loved her so. Well, the Eddies of Eddie Avenue fame seized upon this opportunity to bring their niece Florence out. So Florence comes out, and they set it all up. Well, the day of the wedding, now Aunt Ruth, who's right over here, Aunt Ruth tells me, that what happened, she was 11 years old, she's at the church, no way be Hammond. The church is full. Finally, some man got up and went to the, the house, and here's Mr. Hammond lying on his bed, perfectly happy head, hands behind his head, looking at the ceiling. The man said, Frank, it's your wedding day. And Frank and Hammond, or uh, Hammond said, yep. And he says, get up, you SOB, or I'll shoot you. And he took him to the church. Now, I don't know if that's so or not, but that's what I heard. <laughs> Do you have anything to, you'd like to add? Frankie, you gave that. Shotgun How about, wedding. huh? Shotgun a little shock. Well, I guess that's what we'd call it, isn't it? <laughs> well, they were a wonderful family, and uh, Mr. Worden was really quite exceptional. He was a great statesman. But my son Hank has this, we have some transcripts, and Hank says it's the best Western story you've ever read, the fighting and the infighting about the properties and, and that. Oh, he said, it's just, it's fascinating. He said, what's what's in there. There you are. You talk about that, Hank, the, the, the article, but you found about the, all the fighting between them. Oh, yeah, Frankie has the stats on that. That's huh? what he has. Yeah. Share that, Frankie. The battle. Well, I, I want you to talk about... The Battle of Walla Walla? No. The, Hank, I want you to talk about when you look through that uh, book that I gave you about all the fighting and oh, oh, about Patty Canyon and Remember? All the, on, on, after he died, the, uh, Yeah, Charlie. well, the, the big fight. They had a big fight, all of them, and, yeah. you know. And, of course, they're all related, so you have to be very careful. Yeah. Now, Worden's Market is no relation to this Worden. 
they, they came in with the, with the McLeods and Hammonds. We are the original wardens. How do you like that? <laughs> do you have anything to add? Um, no. Pardon? as well? I didn't hear you. Were they store clerks? Or they well, yeah, uh, Bill's father was a store clerk. And what, the, what Francis did, um, he, he wasn't any good at gold mining. So what he did was he set up uh, supplies and stores all along the way. And he met Mr. Higgins. I used to talk to a lot of grade school kids, and I said, can you imagine they're fighting the Indian Wars, and they're sitting around a campfire. And Higgins, Higgins had been a commissary man for the Stevens Expedition, which came out and laid out the railroad. And uh, he, so he said, uh, Christopher Higgins says, you know, Frank, I know where there's a great place for a trading post. And he said, where? He said, well, he said, when I was coming through with that exposition, he said, there's a valley that five other valleys open into it. And he said, uh, it would be ideal for a trading post. So they packed up their gear after the war, went back to Walla Walla. Now, you know how hard it is to get to Walla Walla today? Can you imagine? Coming from Walla Walla with 76 horses. Is that what you said? A pack train of 76? Can you imagine that? And so off they came and uh, started Missoula. And it was started out at that point out there. I told you to go to the end of those end of those storage units and look directly and you'll see this this point. There's a trailer house out there now. They they wouldn't let you do it now. But in that day and age, you could get by with it. So, do you have any questions at all? Missoula, Missoula, or what, Missoula was originally going to be named um, Wardensville, but Francis decided not to call it that. And he was in the first legislature, wasn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah. He was kind. Of, he was a, apparently a quiet man. That kind of runs in the family, and they get mouthy wives. <laughs> apparently that's apparently. what happens apparently that's what happens <laughs> yeah yeah mouth, mouthy wives so anyway and the Dixons they're supposed to be here and the Sterlings you know they're all all tied in together and all married I know several little stories but I don't think I'll tell them since the other people are here when they're not here I tell stories on them too but we'll <laughs> skip that today <laughs> so any other questions well, this, this has been a great program hasn't it? it's a lot of fun and